Hey everyone, Wolf81TX here, and today we're going to talk about reloading, specifically for people new to reloading, or if you're thinking about getting into it. Now, the first question that needs to enter your mind is, why do you want to reload? Cost is a great reason, but you need something else, mainly because you're startup. Getting started into reloading can get expensive really fast. So, if you've done any research on the internet, you actually can see where I'm going. You can spend well over a thousand dollars on a loader. I'm going to try and help you with that. So, once you come up with something extra, then cost. Do you want precision loads? Um, I have a friend. Wants to take his AR-15, but that's mine, but his AR-15, and he wants to make 600 yard shots consistently. And that's not a problem with the AR-15. You can hit a target at 600 yards, but he wants to get that precision shot at 600 yards. He can't do that with your standard $10 off the shelf ammunition. He has to spend quite a bit of money in order to get the rounds that he do it, or he can hand load them get that same precision ammunition for half the price. This is where cost does come back into it, but it's you're tailoring your loads to that rifle. There's more to it than that. It's you can actually with the right tools, you can measure out a load, you can measure the bullet to go be custom tailored to that gun and so that gun with that bullet will be more accurate than that gun and Joe Schmo's bullet. This comes back to another thing for a uh, doing research. Research, research, research. That's the best thing I can tell you is the more manuals you have the better. Here's some of the manuals I have. I've got Right now, let's see, five manuals, and I have access to two more that belong to a friend of mine. So, and the other ones he has are the same ones I've got. And that's what you have to go out and you've got to do research. The more manuals you have, the better. Read them. Don't just kind of skim through them. Actually read them. The first... Especially for you guys first starting out, you haven't loaded a bullet yet. If you're thinking about loading a bullet and you don't have any of those, stop right now. Step away from the press. Go get a couple manuals. I recommend no less than two. You've got to have at least two. You're going to... I know people who have a much bigger library than I do. But when I go and I start doing research for a new load... I look at every one of those books and then after that I get on the internet. I try and find the best load that I can. Now, the internet, awesome tool, great tool. I can't stress how great a tool the internet is, but keep in mind if you're on a forum and Joe Schmo says this load works great in my gun. Keep in mind that works great in his gun. What works good in his gun may not be good for yours. That can get you in trouble. That can get lead down a whole path of problems. So, if somebody lists the load and you can't find it in any manual, then don't do it. Plain and simple, you really actually need to start at the bottom and then ladder your way up as far as loads go. What I mean by ladder my way up is you take your case and you get your primer and then you look up the load data for that bullet and it'll have a starting load and a max load. Now usually what I recommend is to go 10% below that starting load. For the, if you're looking for a good load for, let's say, a 1911, which, 
white, empty, no mag. The best way to find the perfect load for a 1911, believe it or not, is to start out to where you get a load that will successfully sight it. All right. Um, I know one guy that he actually, he starts so low that some of his rounds don't fully cycle. And then he starts adding until his, the uh, slide fully cycles and ejects the case. He stops right there. Then he tries that out and he wants to make sure that load will every time cycle that slide. After he gets there, then he'll add a little bit depending on how accurate that load is. If he's shooting accurately with that load, that's when he stops. It makes low recoil and a good round shoot. Maybe not the best for a self-defense or for a hunting round, so to speak, but for him, that's what works. Um, when you do go, if you try doing something that like that, be real careful. Uh, main reason I bring that situation up is if you go so low that it doesn't even cycle the slide, you run the chance of if you go that too low that your bullet won't make it out the barrel. So when you're doing something like that, after each round, check the barrel. Make sure your barrel's clear, then move forward. If you get a stuck bullet in your barrel and you fire off another shot, you're in for some hospital time. So just be careful. This hobby can get very dangerous with it. Um, this goes back to, you know, what you read on the internet, take it with a grain of salt. Me, what I do is I start at the bottom end and I ladder my way up and the, I start at the bottom load per book. Let me state that. And I work my way up and if I don't find an accurate load for the powder and bullet combination I'm looking for, sometimes I'll take it back just a little bit and I'll start actually laddering down path and for take a... Uh, there were some plated bullets I was experimenting with and I tried all over from the starting load to max and I could not get a consistently good accurate load with those numbers. Well I finally went below the I believe the starting for that bullet if I remember correctly was five points O grains of powder that I was using and I ended up with a 4.6 now that load was accurate didn't hit very hard but it was accurate and I don't use that bullet obviously anymore but that's what you want to be careful of you've got to make sure that you take care of the information you if it's not in a load book and it's just be careful with it. Equipment. <clears throat> First thing, foremost, base equipment, you've got to have your press. Now, I have the Dillon RL550B. This is my preferred press. I've Out of any press out there on the market, if you're starting, if you're already been loading, that's the press I recommend. A couple reasons for this is it loads more rounds well you have a, uh, a greater capacity of how many of the type of rounds you can load in it than just about any other press on the market as a progressive press now that stated a single stage press it loads all of them probably more than that one but for a progressive press that one does it all Secondly, progressive is where every stroke of the handle produces a round. This one, you control the speed. 
is you actually, I'm not sure if you can see it in the video, but you're the one actually turning that plate. It's not doing it automatically, you're the one doing it. So it gives you, you're running at your own speed. For you first time beginners, that's awesome because that means that press can be used as a single stage press. You don't have to use it in fully automatic. You don't have to go as fast as you can, which I don't ever recommend. You can go at your own speed and make quality rounds. And on top of that, the primer system and everything else on this press has just been better than most of the other presses that I've seen. Now, if budget-wise, that one's going to set you back a little bit. Sure, you, once you, when you look at it, you're going to say, well, hell, they only sell it for, I believe it's 450 bucks, And these other ones are five and 600 so... Why, you know, it's only going to be that much. Well, let me keep in mind, that's just the press and one shell plate kit. One caliber change. That's none of this. Well, okay, when you buy the press, you get one powder drop and head, and then they give you one caliber change kit. So basically what you're looking at, minus the dies, is how that press comes. Now, when you want to do more calibers, that means you've got to buy the shell plate kit, you've got to buy the dies, you may want to buy an extra head, and that starts costing money pretty quick. So by the time everything's said and done, you may spend eight nine hundred dollars just getting started for one or two calibers on if you're on a budget the best single stage press it's the only no it's not the only single stage press I mean I like RCBS makes great a great single stage they're uh, a little on the pricey side but you can find them for around 180 bucks if you're lucky most of the ones I've seen lately are 250 but shop around. You can find them for that $160, $180 range. Best press for the money is probably the Lee Classic Cast Press. I say that one just because I like the sturdy build of the Lee Classic Cast. Not the other Lees, just the Lee Classic Cast. Not to say the other ones are bad, but that's the one I prefer. And that's the one I suggest a hundred dollars uh, caliber changes on that are basically they're extremely cheap you buy a little shell holder and the dies for it and that's your caliber change so if you're on a budget go with the Lee classic cast press and you can you may not be able to pump out five six seven hundred rounds in an hour but you'll be able to get precision loads and for a low cost uh, but like I said RCBS is a great one Lyman makes a couple good presses it depends on what you want and what you're willing to spend for the name it really it all just comes down to preference second thing is extra tools is you will need there is no way around this you will need a caliper you have to have one sorry folks it's just a way of life you gotta have it you can get the dial caliper like what I've got or they have digital ones either one of them work well uh, I've heard some people have problems with the digital ones but me the main reason I have the dial is this one's a lifetime warranty. If it breaks, Dylan will replace it. They, if you have a digital caliper, usually those only have a one-year warranty on them. So keep that in mind. If this thing ever breaks, I get the new one. Plain and simple. Uh, you're going to need a primer tray. The way this works, you put the, you pour your primers out. Shift them around to where they're all facing the same position, put the lid on, flip it over, 
and then you can use your primer pickup tool pick them up and you put them in your tube now if you're using a single stage press from what I've heard even though several of them have a primer loading capability the uh, way to go is a uh, a hand priming tool so keep that in mind those usually run around between 50 and 60 bucks and you're also if you're doing straight walled pistol calibers this isn't going to be an issue if you're going to be doing rifle calibers such as 30-06, 308, anything with a shouldered case on it, you're going to need a trimmer. And that's because every time you resize it, it stretches the brass. So keep in mind a good trimmer. Your trimmers will range anywhere between 50 bucks to 200 and more, depending on what type you want to get. I got mine from Lyman. It's a universal trimmer. I like that one, the way it works. I may end up doing a video on it sometime, just because to me it works well. A little bit of a learning curve on it, but it works. Another thing is a tumbler. And as you see over there, I've got the uh, Dillon CV2000. I bought that one just because I wanted it. That one's expensive. That one's $180. There are much, much cheaper options out there. You, uh, and there are, I'm going to say, probably even better options. There's, uh, well, Thumblers Tumblers uses, it's not cheaper, but they have a, um, a wet tumbler that I've heard great things about. I've never used one, but those are an option. That's a dry tumbler, so I use crushed walnut. Another thing is, is does it matter how shiny the brass is? No. The main reason to have those is to get all the crud and crap that shells get at the range off so that it won't mess up your dies. For me, I don't add the additives and everything to make your brass shiny. To me, it's just useless because I'm just going to load it up, shoot it again. I don't care what those rounds look like. But if you do, there are things you can get for those. Or I, if it does matter that much to you, I would probably look into the wet tumbling with the stainless media. And... Uh, Let's see, what else do I need to add? Oh, really, really, really important one is a, uh, a powder measure. Got to have one. You can get digital, you can get balance beam scale like what I do. It doesn't matter. It, you have to have it. You can't get around that one, guys. There, you, in order to set your press up, to know where you know how much powder is getting dropped into it you just have to have it there is no you know punch a button and it just drops it in so that right there you're looking between well this one you're looking around 60 to 150 dollars depending on a balance beam scale for digital scales there you can get them as cheap as 20 bucks to all the way to 500 and six hundred dollars don't get the five hundred six hundred dollars those things are just plain crazy you don't need one like that it's insane a simple scale will do you just fine um, now if you just gotta have that just because then hey fire away whatever floats your boat but Personally, you can take a Frankfurt Arsenal little digital scale will do fine. Um, let's see. another. It's another little tool that's actually kind of, it helps. Especially when you're doing, let's say, my 30 out 6 loads. And I'm trying to be really careful with weighing each and every cartridge. Getting a powder trickler. 
it's not needed, but they do come in handy. And all that does is you turn this and it slowly pops powder out the end of the tube here into your deal, into your uh, powder measure. And it's an awesome tool. Uh, it took me forever to buy one. I finally did and I don't regret it. I love it. It, it really speeds up the process from where I was doing it. I was using a powder scoop and just tapping it and trying to get it. And if I, some extra would come out, then I'd have to scoop it out and start all over again. Now, let me move on to bullets and cases. When you start reloading, tell your friends. Especially if you've got a lot of friends that shoot, let your friends know that, you're re that you reload reason why is to take point in case a friend of mine he knows I reload he knows I reload 45 ACP and he brought me this bag of 45 ACP I've got brass and let them know about it they'll start saving your brass even if you don't use the rounds that if you don't shoot or you don't reload the rounds hang on to them they're there's a big community out there, Facebook, um, other forums where you can use that brass to trade for other brass or who knows, you may end up buying a rifle in that brass later on down the road. I don't shoot 380, I don't shoot 9mm, I don't do 38 or 357, but I've got all of those. I have 243, I have... 3030, which I used to have a 3030, and I don't need more, but I still have all those because I'm probably going to end up with a 3030 later on down the road. So let your friends know that'll save you a bunch on brass. Uh, and that is the most expensive part about reloading is the brass. If you buy brass brand new, it's pretty expensive. Now, if you've got your friends bringing you this brass all the time, then that's actually, that's basically free load for that portion of it. Save boxes, like I've got here, just little parts boxes or whatnot. Um, I've got a cigar box around here somewhere that I use. Any little box that you can find to store brass in. Go ahead and grab that, hold on to it, keep it, you're going to be using it. Coffee cans, whatnot, you're going to end up using those. Or, if you want to, go ahead and buy, you know, the special box bins. It costs a little bit more, but me, I'd rather just use a normal little box and save a little money. Now, on the bullets. I've got three examples here. This is for my 4570. Uh, these are Hornady's. FTX bullet. Buying bullets this way in this little box at 50 at a time is expensive. This was $30 for 50 of them. So you can kind of, I can buy these 30 bucks for 50 or I can buy 500 for their, well, 500 lead bullets for like 100 bucks. So keep that in mind. Uh, same way with this one, uh, this, although these are for my 30-06, I get a hundred of them, and I just happen to like these bullets, the only reason I really buy them this way, and they're $32 per 100, that's not a bad price, so if you can buy, if you can find a bullet you like, and you can buy them by the hundreds or thousands, that's what you want to do. Taking point, this box right here. This is for my 45, and I order these by the thousand, and it's much, much cheaper to order them by the thousand. You can take, if you want to order them by the 100 or 200 or whatnot, or 50, you're going to spend as much for that 50 as I do for well almost as much as I do for that entire box of a thousand it's can get that expensive 
Now, you shoot lead, it's going to be a little bit cheaper. If you make your own bullets, it's even cheaper. But that's starting to get harder with some of the restrictions of the stuff that they don't make anymore. So, making your own bullets, do some more research into that. I'm not an expert. I don't make my own. But, as far as lead versus full metal, full metal jacket bullets, yeah, you're going to be looking at almost the same price, give or take. They've got the plated bullets. Those are a little bit cheaper. They're well, and you can get the lead cheaper depending on which company you go through. But just remember, you want to buy them in bulk, because, well, point in fact, this box here cost me two hundred dollars for one thousand. If I buy them by a anything less than that, you're looking at adding another two to three cents per bullet and when you're ordering them a whole bunch of them that adds up so no matter what you always want to do it in bulk primers especially if you order them online you have to buy them in bulk minimum five thousand primers at a time the reason why is the hazmat fee for prider, primers and powder if you order them online keep in mind there's a $27 hazmat charge that gets added on top of shipping and that covers up to 40 pounds so you can order up to 40 pounds of powder or primers and that $27 will blanket cover that entire order so keep in mind you want to keep that in bulk if you just order a thousand primers yeah it's okay but it's not great so keep it in bulk that keeps your cost down um, oh uh, one thing I wanted to mention for uh, brass when you get it sort it out and keep it separate especially if you shoot 45 ACP and 9 millimeter and 40 and 380 Sort it, keep them separate. When you throw them in your tumbler, you will thank yourself later. The uh, what will end up happening is your 380, your 9 millimeter, your 40s will end up getting stuck inside of each other, and you will literally need pliers to get them out after it sits for a couple hours in the tumbler. So sort them out, keep them separate, and clean them separate. Oh, I don't know what else to say. I mean, me personally, if you ask my opinion as which press would I get, what equipment I get, I like Dylan. It's a buy once, you only cry once, and this is the only press I really have to have. It covers everything. The, uh, but if I were to... If I was on a budget and just trying to get into it, then I would go with the Lee Classic Cast. Now, the, Lee also has a hand priming tool that is pretty good if you have if uh, you're on the road a lot. I know truckers who reload their own ammunition. It's great a little tool. It packs away. You don't need to bolt it to a bench. So, oh, another thing, reloader's bench, especially in what you're reloading. If you're reloading a small pistol caliber, it's not going to matter that much or oh, any pistol caliber, really. Uh, when you get into big calibers, such as 40, uh, 4570, 50 BMG, 380 Lapua, you're going to... Um, uh, 338 Lapua. Resizing that can it, be a little bit of a struggle at times. So you want a good bench. You want one that's the right height for you so that you're comfortable, but you want it solid. You don't want it to move around. You don't want it shaking. You want it solid. Uh, I custom built this one so that it is the right height for me and the way I reload. So that's something you might want to keep in mind. If not, bolting it to a desk, an old desk that you don't use anymore, works just as well. 
So, oh, is there anything else I could possibly mention? I, if, is it worth it? Yes. I, uh, especially when there's a scare like we had this last while where you couldn't get ammunition. I still had ammunition for my 45 and my 4570 I was I was fine so not only that it's just more satisfying to me to be able to shoot something I made and to see it hit the target I get uh, to me it makes me feel better um, there's a lot of things for reloading I mean the satisfaction behind it it's relaxing if you let it be but the biggest thing is just go slow don't ever get in a rush and uh, you'll actually enjoy it at times as far as cost wise and what calibers to start first personally for me like if you have a 45 get that set up first now, if you look, if you've got a fairly big range of it, just to kind of show you the biggest cost saver you could ever do. I don't load this one, but this guy right here is probably the biggest cost saver in the history of ammunition reloading. This is the 50 BMG, which if you were to buy just this one bullet, it's probably a little over $5 per round. It's a lot of money. $5 a shot. Now, when you reload it, it costs just a little under $2.50. I think that one pretty much proves it. Yeah, it can save money. On the flip side of that part is you'll be out shooting your 50 BMG more. Instead of taking three shots, calling it a day, you might take 15 or 20 shots just because, hey, you're reloading it, you've got the stuff at home, you're good to go. So that's why earlier I said don't ever look at cost as being the main factor. You're going to spend more money. You're just going to shoot more for the money you spend. Ask anybody in reloading. That's what they're going to say. Again, uh, check. Make sure you check online. Uh, their Facebook has some awesome pages out there for different reloaders sites. And there's usually we're all pretty, we're willing to help you. If you've got a question, a seasoned reloader doesn't have a problem passing on his experiences most of the time. And, uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm hoping I covered. If you got any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to them as soon as I see them. And uh, hey, y'all take care.